Hello, this is Bill Bullard with RCAF USA, the voice of the independent cattle producer in the United States of America. Well, U.S. Department of Agriculture data show that cattle feeding in the United States is not a profitable venture. The data reported by USDA show that since January 1 of 2000, the returns for feeding cattle for the past 20 years was an average loss of about $22.10 per head per month for 20 years. Now, if the data is correct, it certainly explains why we've lost 75% of all of our smaller farmer feeders since we entered the North American Free Trade Agreement 25 years ago. Over 83,000 farmer feeders have already been eliminated, and there are now only 26,000 farmer feeders remaining in the entire United States. But if USDA's data are, are correct, then how is it that there are any cattle feedlots left if they've lost on average $22.10 per head per month for 20 years? And how is it that the very largest feedlots are getting increasingly bigger? Now, while an appropriate hedging strategy obviously helps feeders get by in this low price environment, we have believed for many years that a contributing factor for this perplexing situation is that some larger feedlots receive preferential terms and prices that are not reported to and incorporated into the USDA's more widely used price series and are not offered to the smaller farmer feeders that have been dropping like flies. In other words, we believe these preferential terms and prices include such contracts as cost plus contracts that effectively insulate the larger feedlots from the vagaries of a volatile marketplace, while simultaneously subjecting the smaller independent feedlots to that volatile market that is marked by persistently low prices. The loss of tens of thousands of independent feeders has materially harmed the entire U.S. cattle industry because there are now far fewer marketing outlets for the marketing of lightweight feeder cattle. Based on our belief, we helped convince Congress in 2008 to direct the USDA to write rules to implement the provisions in the Packers and Stockyards Act that prevented packers from granting preferential treatment to some feedlots while denying those same favorable contract terms to others. And in 2008, Congress directed the USDA to write rules to implement that provision that prohibits undue preferences or advantages in the cattle market. A proposed rule was written a decade ago, but opponents prevented it from ever being finalized. Agriculture Secretary Sonny Perdue was among the opponents, and he officially withdrew the rule in 2017. But Congress's mandate remains in effect, and last week, the Secretary issued a proposed rule that purports to implement this important protection for independent U.S. cattle producers. Unfortunately, the proposed rule falls well short of what is needed to ensure small independent feeders have an equal chance of success. This is because the proposed rule does not even attempt to clarify that cattle producers harmed by an undue preference or advantage does not have to show, in addition to the harm they suffered, that the preference or advantage also caused an injury to competition. Or put another way, the rule does not do away with certain court decis decisions which have held that a breach of a Packers and Stockyards Act requires a showing that the entire competitiveness of the U.S. cattle industry was harmed. This is an untenable burden for a single independent cattle producer and would likely prevent any meaningful enforcement of the proposed rule. The rule further minimizes the possibility of enforcement by excusing those preferences which are based on customary business decisions. However, as these preferential deals appear to have been offered to large feeders for some time, Arguably, all preference deals fall into this customary practice exception, despite the significant harm they have caused our industry. RCAF will soon provide a written analysis of the proposed rule, and we'll be encouraging our members to file comments before the March 13th of 2020 deadline. We can't afford to continue losing the critical infrastructure our industry needs to support a competitive marketplace. That infrastructure includes our farmer feeders that provide numerous marketing outlets for the tens of millions of calves that independent producers sell each year. If we lose those marketing outlets, we lose our competitive infrastructure and it will be game over for us. Just as it is already game over for our sister industries, the hog and poultry industries that did not fight back against the forces that have effectively killed competition in their respective industries. If you wanna support our efforts, I urge you to join with us by going to our website at r-calfusa.com or call us at 406-252-2516. Thank you and goodbye.